Make your content pop with simple, easy to learn transitions. This tutorial will show you how to create three dynamic transitions in Adobe Premiere Pro. To create this transition, we want to first create an adjustment layer. An adjustment layer is an empty layer that effects can be applied to and are often placed above clips. They're mostly used for color correction, but we can also use it here for a quick transition. So let's go down to our panel, find the adjustment layer and click on it. We'll make it the same size as our sequence, same frame rate and everything. You can double click to open it up in your source panel, scrub through, and you can see that there's nothing there. You can click on the effect controls. You can also see that there's nothing there at the moment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag that over onto our sequence. And we're gonna trim it to length of our transition. Let's click on the adjustment layer. Now you can see all the effect controls and now we're gonna go down to the effects panel we're going to find the transform effect and then we're going to apply that onto the adjustment layer. Right there, you can either drag it directly onto the clip or you can drag it up into the effect controls box as long as the adjustment layer is highlighted. Now you can see the transform options there. Let's uncheck use composition shutter angle because we want to use our own shutter angle. We'll set the shutter angle to 350 degrees. Now we'll click on the scale keyframe We'll set it to where we want the transition to start. We'll go to where we want the next keyframe to be. We'll scale it up from there about three times the, you know, the previous number. So about 300, then we'll go back. We'll go forward to where we want the next one to end. We'll make it back to 100. So you can scrub through. So select all the keyframes, right click on one of them. Uh, and then bring up the menu, click on Bezier, because we want them to be more of a gradual transition. We, want, we don't want it to be really harsh. And there you go. You can play it back a few times, see if you like how fast it moves. Very simple, dynamic transition going in and out while the new clips are coming in. If you have content that needs to be cut with specific pacing in mind, speed ramps are a fantastic way to decrease or increase the momentum of the content. To get started, Go ahead and double click on the timeline section you want to apply the transition to and right click on the clip. Then find show clip keyframes, hover over time remapping, and then click speed. A speed ramp will now appear on your video, noted by this band right here. To increase or decrease the speed of the video, you can press command on a Mac and while you're holding that down, click on the clip where you want your transition to start. This will create a keyframe. So you can speed it up or slow it down, but we're gonna go up. So let's take it up a little bit. We can tweak it a little bit more. We can extend it however, however far we want to, and then we'll close this gap. And you can play it back and you can see how it speeds up there at the end. Now we can move to the next clip in our timeline. The same thing goes for the other section. We can command click, creating our keyframe, and then we can speed up the band just like we did on the previous clip. Now we can simply just go back and play it back and forth and see our ramp in progress as it's playing back. The simplest way to get glitch effects is to utilize our Pond5 After Effects library. Most of the effects available are easy to utilize and can save you a lot of time in the post-production process. So to do a glitch effect manually, the first thing to do is to duplicate the clips. So you can copy and paste. You can simply option click on a Mac and drag the clips up to copy them. So after we duplicated our clip, we wanna cut it to length. Then we can select it, change the opacity to 40%, and then change the blend mode to screen. And then we wanna cut the bottom clip at that same point, go up to the opacity controls and make it zero. So then we're going to go to the effects tab. We're going to find the ASC CDL effect, and we are going to apply that to our top copy. Then we're going to duplicate it two more times. On our first copy, which is the layer on V2, we are going to change the red slope. On the second one, we're going to change the green slope. And on the third, we're going to change the blue slope. After you apply the color changes, this is where you want to make random movements. So first create a position and scale keyframe with the current position and scale. Then you can go little by little 
adjusting the scale, the position, and then on the last keyframe, obviously you wanna go in and you want to reset the original keyframe. So you can copy and paste, or you can click on reset parameter for the last keyframe, and they'll be matching the original measurements. So after you get all your keyframes set, you wanna copy and paste those on all the different layers, and then you go through one by one, and you can adjust each keyframe parameter so that they're not all in unison. Once this is all keyframed properly on all three, the effect should work. Now you just need to move on to the second half of this transition. So to duplicate this, all you need to do is create copies of the different clip and then paste the attributes of the original copied clips. Right click, go to copy, and then go to the clip that you wanna apply it to and click on paste attributes. You can do this for all of your duplicate clips in the transition, and then you can play it back and see the glitch working in action. We hope these transitions will be helpful to your future projects. Looking for more transitions? Check out pond5.com slash after effects to find Premiere and After Effects transitions and make your project stand out. <laughs>